Hey guys, we're interrupting your regularly scheduled YouTube programming for some breaking news, Nathan. Isn't that right? That's right, guys. We love off-roading and we love our British brands. In fact, me and Nathan have both owned Land Rovers. Yep. We still own one. And today's breaking news is all about the star in the Land Rover slash Range Rover lineup, in my opinion at least. It's the Defender. Voila. Uh -huh. There we go. It was spied again, but this time it was not just spied on the outside, but we got spy pictures from the inside, Nathan, which we'll show you. Yep. We got spy pictures from underneath. That's huge. That's huge because we now, at least we think we know what kind of suspension it will have. But before we get to all this, let's kind of talk about the Defender and where it came from, right? So it started out basically as a kind of a copy of a Jeep. Right, like a Willys Jeep. But the Series 1, yep. which is what the Defender is based on, is basically a truck. I mean, it is a simple... Or a tractor. Like an, or a tractor, a utility vehicle, literally. I mean, something that you would put on a farm. Yeah, they left a lot out. of Jeeps in the UK. Yeah. And when the Series 1 came along, it was basically an all-aluminum tractor that was used as a very agrarian instrument to plow fields but over the years of course with the different series and then in 83 the defender it has become kind of the most off-road worthy iconic british brand uh, and unfortunately uh, we only got the defender from i believe 93 to 97 so if you want one here uh, you're gonna have to pay like 75k unless it was imported illegally yeah, there were a whole bunch of gray market ones that came here, and uh, the government found out about them and crushed them, which was Ouch. difficult at best. Uh, but that's one of the problems, is that it's really hard to get those vehicles here in the United States. The EPA and the Department of Transportation got rid of them. They didn't have airbags, and then when people tried to bring them in gray market, well, it didn't go well. I would go as far as to say that they are the ultimate forbidden fruit for many off-roaders. Oh, hell yeah, yeah, they, they really are. And it's, it's really hard, really hard to find another vehicle that really has that type of charm and off-road capability and that cachet of British capability and leaking and burning and other issues that it might have in the past. Well put, Nathan. Thank you. I think we've kept them waiting long enough, so yes. let's uh, turn the page and let's talk about today's news. We're talking about the new 2020 Land Rover Defender. Uh, and the story so far is there's an all new Defender coming, which yep. is exciting. Uh, and keep going, dude. So it replaces the old bare bones Defender. Um, and that was, as we said, in production since 1983. Um, this is a completely different vehicle. That one, the old one, you know, as we said, it was based on the Series 1 Land Rover. This is not a truck. This is sort of a car-based crossover that hopefully will be able to be very capable off-road. We're expecting it to launch in September of 2019 around the Frankfurt Motor Show, maybe at the Frankfurt Motor Show. We don't know for sure. We don't know. If we're really lucky, maybe we'll be invited to it. And that would be really awesome because we'll have a chance to really take it off-road. And you know what's exciting, Nathan, huh. and frustrating? The spy shots that we're going to show these guys, they're from here in Colorado, and we didn't get them. <laughs> so no. Somehow we missed them. <laughs> we, we, we try so hard to get these shots, but this was one of the ones that was elusive. And here's the crazy part. That Defender has been testing all over the United States, actually all over the country uh, and all over the world. But it's been here in Moab, it's been here in Colorado, and these are the, our stomping grounds, and we haven't been able to catch one. So the pictures you're seeing are not from us, but the good news is they're very detailed. Yeah, and today's spy shots show more of the Defender's new direction. So, of course, it retains that boxy shape. As you recall, a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, uh, they kind of showed a pre-production prototype of a new Defender, remember? They ran yeah. around like the California beaches. Yes. And everybody kind of puked in their mouths because <laughs> it was really it not, was the right, weird. Yeah. not the right direction. Right. Uh, and so I think they've gone back to the boxy shape, which is great because recently Land Rover design has been, I'm going to call it urban chic. Right? You think yeah. of things like the new Discovery which and the Discovery Sport, which, you know, they're kind of... They're Somebody not. said something that you'll love. Yeah. Somebody called them high heel crossovers. Yeah. And that kind of encapsulates the whole thing because they're, yeah, urban chic. They're meant to be, you know, something that you get out at a nice opera, an event, a nice thing. But off-roading, tough. No, they don't look that way anymore. No, so. no, no. So the most off-road worthy one I think that I've seen recently is the Disc 
discovery yeah. uh, with kind of the off-road bits that they use. You can get it, they use them at least as their recovery vehicles. You can get like winches on them, right, bigger right, tires. Right. But if you look at the Velar, that is definitely an opera mobile. If you look at the uh, new Evoke, which I was just on, that is not, <laughs> that is not square jaw by any means. No, no, but they're still capable. They have a lot of potential but they also have a lot of electronics and a lot of other goodies, and I think we'll cover some of that actually on and, this. And the one thing that they all have now, which if you're an off-roader is not great news, is air suspension. Ah. Because no matter what company makes it, it eventually fails. It does indeed. However, we're gonna cover something very interesting that we believe we've discovered. Yeah, so um, there's gonna be, what, two versions of the new Defender. We're right. looking at a two-door and a four-door. Um, but, dude, what about the interior? And hang on, what about the suspension? So. Let's turn the page, and why don't you give them the big news? Major, well, we know. You guys already know this. Independent suspension. Big surprise. A lot of the components are going to be shared with other products that they already built, obviously, because they need to keep the price down. But the photo uh, shows the independent rear suspension, air suspension, and standard coil springs. Now, this has not been officially confirmed. No. But... We're seeing it on testers, and so it's a pretty good chance that that will be something that's on the base model, which is great for off-roaders, mainly because you can actually lift it a little bit, right? Something to think about. Yeah, and so let's kind of talk about what the difference is between independent rear suspension and a solid axle, which, right. for instance, a Wrangler has sure. or trucks have, right? Mm -hmm. So what Land Rover brought to the table with the LR3 was terrain management response. And basically what happens is using the ABS system, the vehicle knows which wheel is spinning, it breaks that wheel, sends power to the wheel that's not spinning, and hopefully that's the one that's not in the air, right? And so right. it's the one that has traction. And Jeep has kept kind of an old fashioned approach, basically just sending power to- On all the Wrangler. On the Wrangler, sure, yeah, sure. to all four wheels at the same time. And that's really the difference. Also, uh, Jeep has never really gone Wrangler with the air suspension, but a lot of competitors have. It's Certainly. kind of a thing with, uh, a lot of the more upscale off-roaders. The downside air suspension, kind of the side why most people still like the standard coil springs, is not only will it fail eventually, eventually yeah. uh, but when you put the vehicle on its tippy toes, there's not a lot of suspension travel. No, no, articulation is really one of the big issues when it comes to this type of suspension setup. The whole thing about having a solid beam axle is that you're doing this as opposed to having independent suspension, which does this. I mean, the easiest way I think about it is like a teeter-totter, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. One's always on the ground. Right, right. And it's proven. It's obviously something that Jeep has been using for years and years in the Wrangler. It's obviously one of the better off-road vehicles out there out of the box. And yeah, but out the other side of it, a lot of people drive these vehicles on the street. And when you have a street bias vehicle, exactly right. you want an independent suspension for the best driver control. Yeah, and let's face it, most people drive them on the street. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, you know. Well, that's the other thing about these pictures is that if you look, those look like street tires on this thing, right? Yeah. Even though they're bouncing around off road and everything else, those tires certainly don't look like big fat BFGs. They are much smaller, like thinner uh, street bias tires. And that's what they're going to put on this vehicle. And to me, that's a little scary because that's what they've been putting on all of their products. Yeah, so let's talk about the other big news, and that is, of course, a much more luxurious interior. You oh. know, when I said the Series 1 was a tractor, it had tractor. I've seen those. They yeah. had tractor like, you know, oh, power takeoff and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And the new instrument cluster, of course, is part of that new infotainment wave where everything is now, of course, electronic, yeah. touch screen. Uh, and uh, let's face it, uh, Land Rover has not had the best reputation for having the quickest <laughs> yeah. infotainments. In, in yeah. fact, in the latest J. The power survey, they are fighting it out for dead last with Jaguar. Yeah, they are, and, and Jaguar happens to be part of their uh, whole Algeria, brand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but here's the good news. The interior for the new Defender looks great. It's, it's a unique interior, so it doesn't look like it's sharing any of the components, at least for the most part, with the Range Rover or any of those or other Land Rover products. So it's sort of bespoke, and that in itself is pretty cool. Yeah, there's a unique steering wheel, mm -hmm. there's a chunky looking controls yeah so it's not delicate and uh, a little urban. bit more manly it's a little bit more manly yeah and there's of course the uh, hopefully the next version of the terrain response two buttons on the center console which means that you can pick you know you want to go into soft sand you want to go into snow you want to go into cacti and right. rocks 
or you can just put an auto and the vehicle decides what the best response is. I'm looking forward to the cacti response one where you actually hit the button and actually run that stuff over because I'm sure National Parks are going to be thrilled about that. <laughs> Let me move on to the next group of information though. This is interesting stuff guys because... There's stuff that we don't know. That's right. Yep. We the, don't know. The stuff that we don't know of course is powertrains and let's guess. Yeah. We can guess at it. I mean, you know, uh, they have a diesel, basically very similar to the diesel in the F-150. Which is the three liter uh, V6 diesel. Yep. Um, and this setup could very well work for a vehicle like this because you have great torque. They also have the five liter. Yeah, uh, they have the big super, V8. The big V8 that's supercharged. Uh, and then they also have other smaller power plants in Jaguar. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm guessing it's probably going to have the V8 and the diesel. Uh, really? I, yeah. I was thinking maybe the four cylinder turbo and the diesel. Ah, ah, see, yeah, see, the debate already begins. Yeah. Now uh, there are other things that we don't know, obviously, as well, including pricing. And this is something Roman and I, off camera, were debating about, um, including uh, Zach, who was thinking it would be around the fifties. I think it's going to be around the sixties, and Roman thinks it's going to start at the seventies. I think is what we were talking about. Yeah. So yeah. no idea. So, so kind of curious what your so take you, is. You guys didn't see us behind the camera when I said the powertrains. Tommy shook his head and said, "No way." Uh, I'm going to hold up one vehicle. Okay. And I'm going to tell you what my rationale is. The cool. G-Wagon. G-Wagon has a 4 liter V8, or is it 4.4 liter V8, plus a dual turbo. So I think it's going to go head to head with the G-Wagon. So that thing starts at about 125,000. So I'm thinking if this thing starts at 75, that's a bargain. It might even be more than that. It's going to be placed in my opinion at least, just below the Range Rover in kind of the range. I know Land Rover and Range Rover are, are kind of two different uh, it's supposed to be, yeah. yeah, but still, nevertheless, they, they, they will compete against each other. They are in the same showroom. So I think even though they have them as two separate brands, mm -hmm. they are very similar. It's interesting. We turned this into a Know You're Wrong episode, which yep. is awesome because you're wrong. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to actually slide in much further down. I think it's going to go just above the Discovery Sport. And that's where it's going to begin with the coil springs and the three door, and then it'll move up. And I think it'll go into the 70s, but I don't think, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Once again, we want to get your guys' take on this too, the pricing. And of course, we don't know about the ORI. However, we're starting to get a pretty good idea of what this vehicle is. It doesn't have the ground clearance of a Wrangler, no. And it's pretty obvious that at least once again with the, you know, small tires, it's not exactly what I would call super beefy. However, we don't know what the production vehicle is going to look exactly. like. Exactly. Those tires could be anything. Exactly. And you know what? In case you guys are wondering, ORI is of course a TFL off-road index. It's our way of scoring how good a vehicle is off-road. So we will do that as soon as we know more. But right now we don't have the dimensions. We don't have any of the numbers. That's right. Uh, we just have these spy photos. And uh, Nathan, it should go on sale early 2020. So finally, I mean, I feel like I've been waiting for this thing for like literally a decade. Well, you have. <laughs> That's actually more than that too, if you think about it. Since, you know, the, the mid nineties, if you think about it, because we've all had good experiences and bad experiences with British off-roading. Tommy behind the camera is still shivering from what he's <laughs> gone through with the rear end of our uh, Land Rover recently. The thing is, is that they're super capable, but they're also super a little- finicky. Finicky, yeah, exactly. So we're hoping that this might actually be the beat all end all of all British off roads. Well, you know, Nathan, I look at it this way. When you think about a brand, right, mm -hmm. and you think what vehicle in that brand represents the DNA of that brand, right? right. What vehicle, and to me, the Defender represents the DNA of the Land Rover brand. It, it, is, it is Land Rover. Oh, it's Genesis yeah, with yeah. them, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I've been actually quite honestly shocked that it's taken this long for those guys to actually have one. I grew up, maybe you didn't. I'm going to date myself now, so that's why I'm giving you an out. Watching like Mutual Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right? Yeah, that's right. This is when they went from black and white to color, right? <laughs> and that soundies. Is, and sound. <laughs> you yeah. know, when they were driving the, the Land Rovers through the African tundras, right, with the big tire on the front. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great, dude. I, I watched Tatari, it's the John Wayne movie, yeah. and you know, they had a whole bunch of those. The thing is, is that, uh, I mean, we all know what they were capable of and how awesome they were. We watched the, the trophy cup for yeah. a Camel Trophy oh, Cup. God, that was incredible. How, well, that was a really amazing stuff. Do you see that anymore with the modern ones? No, you don't. Maybe, just maybe, this will bring it back. Yeah, I'm sure hoping so. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you as excited about this as we are? Uh, and once again, you know, a lot of this is speculation, but that's half the fun. Yeah, once again, I would rewind and look at some of these pictures. Underneath, the, I, I think is awesome. That underneath shot is awesome. All right, guys, check out tflcar.com for more news views. And real world reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.